Queensland on Cooning and on RTE 2XM. And uh, welcome back to Cars Land at Cooning and Oak with me, Dermot Lambert. And me, Ayanna Church. In this section, we're going to be hearing from Caitlin Harrington from Sligo, Fiona Cassandra Vargas from Kildare, the 78s from Dublin, Private Idaho from Cork, and Amy Rigney from Trim. We're also going to be having tracks from Fuse in Wicklow, that's a band, Fuse Band in Wicklow, Fuse X, Japanese Sword Fishing from North County Dublin, Kaylee Berry from Wexford, uh, Guadalupe Val from Dublin, and we're going to kick things off with the wonderful Mackenzie Lowe from the Fingal Suit Resource Centre. I know you're somewhere out there, somewhere far away. I want you back. I want you back. My neighbors think I'm crazy, but they don't understand. You're all I have. You're all I have. And I will the stars light up my room I sit by myself talking to the moon Trying to get to you In hopes you're on the other side Talking to me too January, it's original. Yeah. 
watching Garageland at Croonin and Oak with me, Ayanna Church on RT2XN. This is a gorgeous video created by Japanese Sword Fishing performing Last Bus Home. Hi, I'm Joseph from Japanese Sword Fishing and this is a video of our song The Last Bus Home. Uh, even though we wrote it before lockdown, we chose it because it kind of fit with the times and we made the video around stuff we were doing around lockdown, like just hanging around at the park, practicing and walking around a local area.
Stars Land on Cooney and Oak and on RTE 2XM. Garage Dan at Karina and Oak with me, Josh Arigala. And me, Marvi, and we're here with Edison Waters. So, Edison Waters, what is artist management? Artist management, uh, as I hit on the other points in relation to the new world we're in with social media, etc., the manager's role has, has really gone beyond just finding the talent, developing it, and trying to get a record deal and organizing tours and gigs, etc. Especially in the early days of an artist now, you know, we're finding ourselves as managers taking on roles of uh, being the product manager, being the record label, being the radio plugger, being the social media guy, being the social media analytics, um, being the promoter. Um, it's very hands on. It's uh, across uh, the entire spectrum of the industry. Uh, I say to you, several art, um, uh, young managers coming up, you know, they're looking for help of what they should do is trying get as much experience uh, of every part of the industry, not just one. Um, if you want to be able to talk to the record label, you need to be able to talk to them and understand everything that they're doing. If you need to talk to the graphic de designer, you need to be able to talk to them about that. You need to talk to the artists about the music. You need to talk to the producers about what they're doing, understand the legal side of it, the deals, the points, the back ends. 
uh, advances uh, of the photographer that shoots and having a real overview when you're shoulder with shoulder with your artist trying to progress through the industry that you have a, a solid understanding of every conversation that you're you're having with each person in the industry. Um, and as I said, in the early days right now, you you really have to do a lot of the work. Uh, we're doing projects now where, you know, we are do the radio pluggers. Um, we're right in there acting as the label, uh, trying to work our way through with uh, social media strategies, etc., and trying to help the artists across the board. <clears throat> and that is just getting more and more intense these days. And in order for you to get that signing, etc., you really need to build a profile and become relevant. And part of that now is it's almost standard that you are actually a released artist. Um, there is artists out there who haven't really done anything yet, but the majority of acts that are signing are visible on social media. They're on Spotify. They've done an amazing amount of work themselves. Um, and the uh, manager's role, as I said, has expanded now to uh, to amplify what uh, the artist is doing and to be their entire support network across that. And we may actually engage other people depending on where the, the project is in to do PR, etc. Um, but if you're certainly starting out in its early days, uh, very much a lot of pressure across the board for, for management to, to deliver um, on things that they wouldn't have done in the past. And it's also a conversation of what exactly is the role of this this question is what is the role of the manager currently it's everything and uh, as i said uh, for any young managers out there uh, learn as much as you can the way you know every part of the industry um, and also for the artists out there you know you are your first manager you are your first label if you're putting stuff out independent you're going to learn huge amounts of uh, great information great understanding of the industry um, just by putting out music yourself and seeing the whole uh, the process from loading to up to aggregators and streaming etc um, and as I said um, the role has changed uh, and is continuously changing huge amounts of pressure on the management side and artist side as we are in this new world which is only evolving as you speak I really think we're just at the start of, uh, of uh, further developments with the likes of TikTok etc and whatever the next platform is or the next distribution of music as we move from Final to cassette to CD to digital to streaming. Now it's becoming 60 seconds on TikTok. Who knows what else is on the horizon? But um, being ahead of that and understanding the uh, all aspects of, of the industry is extremely important. Down my walls 
with the strength of your love. Oh, I never knew love like I know it with you. When the memories survive, oh, one I can hold on to. further I don't want to have to go where you don't follow I won't hold it back again this passion inside I can't run from myself there's no
2XM broadcasting on all sorts of platforms all over the country and probably all over the world. As a matter of fact, we are broadcasting all over the world, so there you go. Um, music industry guests that have been helping us with the show, we've uh, had great support and we have uh, now got Sheena Madden. Now, Sheena Madden runs Amplify Agency, it's a PR company. And to lots of you young guys out there and lots of the older ones as well that don't know how PR works, we're going to have a couple of words of wisdom from Sheena Madden. Hey everyone, you are so welcome to Garage Land at Karina Nook with me, Josh Narigala. And me, Marvie. And we're here today with Sheena Madden, the director of Amplify HD, which is a very successful marketing agency. So Sheena, what is music PR? So music PR can often be confused with music publicity. So PR stands for public relations and it's essentially music PR is everything that you do to promote the music that you're making. So that can be everything that kind of comes into contact with the public from your social media to the music that you send to the radio, to blog articles that are written about you, to how you interact with people who come to your gigs. Publicity tends to focus mainly with getting in touch with media. So getting in touch with bloggers, with journalists and with radio and with Spotify editors and things like that so that they can promote your music on their behalf, on your behalf. So music PR essentially is everything that encompasses how you get your music across to your fans. Music publicity is using the media to get that message across for you. So Sheena, how important are Spotify playlists and how do I get on them? How important are Spotify playlists? I think this question, again, the answer to it really is in line with the kind of music that you're making and what you want to do with your career. I mean, for sure, in order to be discovered, Spotify now is, you know, and, and, and streaming platforms in general, but Spotify being the largest of them is, um, is the way most people um, consume their music. So, you know, most people, most people making music will want to be as discoverable on Spotify as possible, um, unless you are, unless you are making unless you are you are getting millions of streams on spotify it's unlikely that you're going to make a living from streaming but it is a really important uh, platform to be discoverable on nonetheless um spotify playlists can be i guess divided up into a few different types um spotify editorial playlists are the playlists that are put together by the editors who work for spotify um, and you've probably heard of a lot of them the likes of new music friday uk um, a Breath of Fresh Era, um, an Alternative Era, um, you know, R&B UK. There are the hundreds and hundreds of them. Um, and the way that you get on them, there is, you know, it's a very similar answer to, you know, to how do I get on the radio or how do I get um, picked up by, by music blogs? There is no magic formula and there's no magic answer. Um, it is really a case of, it is a case of making the best music you can make. Um, and going through the processes and finding out about them. If you have a Spotify for Arvis account, um, it will give you, there's there's actually lots of really useful tips on, on how to make the most of the platform. Um, and if you speak to any Spotify editor, what they will say to you is use the Spotify for Artists platform, um, that there, there is no real way around that. Now, I mean, Spotify works on algorithms. It's a tech company as much, some might argue more so than a music company. So. You know, um, there are there are ways definitely to boost your likelihood of being of your music being discovered on Spotify by the editors, and that is to increase the amount of traffic going to your Spotify page. Um, and the way that a lot of people like to do this is through third-party playlists. Um, so you know, this can be anyone from you know uh, Nile or Nine or Golden Pleck or you know the last mixtape or tape any of the blogs that we have here or abroad um, curate Spotify playlists and oftentimes if you send them music and they really like it they'll add you to their playlist. Their playlist might have you know a few hundred listeners so therefore you've got the people who are listening to that playlist listening to your songs. 
I mean, you can do this on a, on a smaller scale by asking your friends or maybe your classmates or, you know, people who you go to college with to um, add to add your single to their playlists as well. And the more you use that platform, the more likely it is that Spotify's algorithms are going to look at you favorably. And then the more likely it is that Spotify's editors will take note of you. But again, I mean, ultimately, it comes down to whether or not the music fits on the playlist that you want it to get on or fits on any given playlist and that it's of the audio quality that Spotify is looking for. Um, so really, there is no magic answer, but using the platform and, and making the most of it is the best way of improving your chances of getting onto Spotify playlists. Hey guys, welcome back and I hope you're enjoying the lovely weather today. I hope you're having a barbecue outside. And we're here at Garage Lab at Quinn and Oak with me, Marby. Me, Joshua Regala, and we are with Sheena Madden. So, Sheena, what should I send to radio stations and bloggers? When you're sending your music, it's really important to do it in a way that is succinct, but really friendly and gives the person that you're delivering it to everything they need in one handy package. So the first rule of thumb that I was all, would always say is don't send attachments. Um, write in the body of an email, introduce yourself briefly, um, introduce the kind of music that you are sending, send a link to a private SoundCloud, um, make sure that it's accessible. Make sure that it's not blocked or that you have to log in in order to access it. Um, if you don't have SoundCloud, get it. <laughs> um, uh, it's fine to send somebody a link to, say, a WAV file in Dropbox, but again, there may be issues there around them having to log in or having permissions. So what I would always advise is to send somebody an unlisted or private SoundCloud link in the first instance. Um, Send them a very short biography about the band and send them a picture. Again, I'd advise doing that as a document with a link as opposed to an attachment. And that's really that's really enough. Um, the song, some information about the band, you know, including maybe some previous press and radio play that you've had, if you've had any, if you haven't, that's okay as well. Um, and a picture so that they can get a feel for you and see what you look like. Um, and if you have if you have a release date for it already set, send that across as well. Um, I'd always give people plenty of notice, especially if you're a relatively new band or a new artist. And um, give people at least you know four, four to six weeks if you can, just to give them time to listen to it and to consider it. Um, so like that, just to recap, uh, avoid attachments, make sure that your permissions are set but so, so that they can access it really easily. Um, and just give them a general idea for of who you are, uh, what your music sounds like, and be nice and be polite. So Sheena, what if I don't get a response to my music? Does it mean they hate me? If you send your music to someone and you don't get a response, it does absolutely, absolutely not mean that they hate you. Nobody hates you. Nobody hates your music. Most people who work in music are really, really nice. Uh, most people who get into working in music are sound. And um, they're also really busy. Um, so generally speaking, if you haven't heard back from somebody, it means that A, they haven't had a chance to read your email yet. B, they've read it and they've forgotten that they have to get back to you and they just haven't done it yet. Or C, they have listened to it and they've realized it's not for them and they intend on getting back to you to let you know what other things have come up in the meantime. Um, and as someone who's worked in the music industry for 15 years and gets a lot of those emails, I can tell you that firsthand. Um, there is always someone that I've been meaning to get back to for three or four weeks and I just haven't had the chance. And if any of you are those people, I'm really sorry and I promise I'll get back to you at some point soon. But what I would say is um, I know that for me, I have a bit of a three strike rule and I get rejected all the time. I don't get responded to, I get ignored. And I'm, you know, and like I said, I've, I've been working in this business for a long time and I still get lots of lots of emails that I send out and don't hear back from. Um, so what I what I have implemented in order to save my my heart uh, from, from the rejection is um, a three strike rule. So you know I will send the first email. Um, if I don't hear back, I'll follow up maybe a week later, just really briefly to say you know again keep it friendly, keep it polite. Um, and then again another week later, if I don't hear back, I'll send a you know I'll, I'll send my third communication saying 
just nudging you on this again. Uh, I won't be, you know, you know, and if it doesn't suit you, that's absolutely fine. If you could let me know, that would be great. Um, that kind of thing is absolutely fine. And then if you don't hear back after the third time, my policy would tend to be to move on. Um, again, it doesn't mean that the person doesn't necessarily like you. You may find, as I have done in the past, that four weeks later, you'll get an email out of the blue. But it really will save you a lot of time and a lot of heartache if you just implement this three strike rule. <laughs>performing our song shed which is available on spotify so just check it out Uh, we're private idaho on spotify and um follow us on instagram at private idaho band enjoy enjoy
cigarettes are gone and I woke up on the lawn missing my shoe and I'm also missing you skin so pale from drinking last night's ale I'm so sick let me puke on that stick <laughs> Left to tell, except my life's going to hell. Best friends are gone, so I go alone. Cause I've got nowhere else to be. So I sit here drinking tea. Nothing left to say, but I want you to stay. When they're gone, I will write you a song I'll try not to cheat because I think you're pretty mean I guess that this is due from all we're going through When we try and call, never answer Thanks to GarageLand for giving us this really great opportunity. It was a lot of fun, and we got to see each other again for the first time in many months to do this, which is cool. And it gave us in like motivation to kind Absolutely. of record more. Of course. So yeah, check us out on Instagram and uh, buy our songs. Yeah, buy our songs, merch, and everything in between. Buy yeah. everything we sell. Everything we sell. Please, Please. now. <laughs> Bye. 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 Love you. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. 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 Can we add them to the Christmas letter list? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> recording this video old school. We tried a couple of new ways of recording, but not the sharpest tool in the box, so it didn't really work. So we're going back to old school with my amp, my mic, and my mom holding the phone. I'm now going to sing a cover from Metallica. I also released this song a couple of years back with the Prague Philharmonic Orchestra. We put it into the pop charts on iTunes, and to my delight it got up to the top 10, and I was amazed. So this is Nothing Else Matters. Trust I seek and
offer something new. Open mind for a different view. And nothing else matters. Never cared for what they do. Never cared for what they know. And I know. So cool. Every day for us something's new Open mind for a different view Trusting who we are And nothing else matters Garage Land on Cooney and Oak and on RTE2XM yeah. This song is called uh, it? Famous 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 This song is about a bearded, macho, <laughs> sweaty <laughs> man <laughs> called Peter <laughs>
short and I'm loving lockdown in Clarny because I get to do nothing all day. I stay at home, play music, go outside and enjoy the nice weather. Speaking of, I'm going out now. Uh, well, for one, the walls have started talking back to me and I've been able to do a lot more music for myself. <laughs> I'm loving lockdown in Tipperary because I get to play my guitar every day. We're Soundstrand and we're loving lockdown in Fingless because it's given us more time to write our music. Garage Land on Cooney and Oak and on OTE2XM.